Now, the Education Secretary, Michael Gove, has been accused of behaving like a child in his increasingly bitter dispute with teachers over the new national curriculum. The row is about his determination to make school children learn more facts. Things are improving in the schools. So Algebra, grammar and, and heroes of British GCSE. history. Michael Gove yes. says his new curriculum will the give school children the essential yeah, knowledge and skills they need to succeed. But that's not the way many teachers see it. And the row between them and their political boss is getting rather nasty. This was BBC the, the Question sort of Time before Easter. Forward, and I think that it's right, the criticism that's made of you, which is that you're trying to push us back to the future. Okay. Uh, well... You know, right, yada yada. I mean, no, the, the I thing is, say yada, yada. Yada. Yeah, well, I will say yada yada. I think it's a because, serious, because the thing is, a serious right criticism, and frankly, I'm no, not the not first serious, to make it. Yeah, you're, you're, uh, I'm not the first to make it. You are not the first to make it, but it is and not you a serious criticism. To what people are saying. It is not. That put down has infuriated um, the teaching thing, profession. Um, I think that more now, more than 2,000 teachers have signed a petition started by a secondary school teacher from Manchester stating they're tired of a yada yada approach from a Secretary of State who behaves like a child. And they say that teaching a litany of facts and figures will result in the decontextualised testing of knowledge. Michael Gove does have his supporters in the education profession. Here at the West London Free School, for example. Free schools can ignore the national curriculum if they want, but here in Hammersmith, the school's founder is happy to sign up. There's this sort of patronising idea that uh, the best that's been thought and said, a knowledge-based curriculum, uh, is only suitable for the top tier, not for the rest of children. And that if you insist on all children doing uh, a, an academically demanding curriculum, that's going to leave most children out. Well, that hasn't been our experience here, and I'm sure that won't be other, other, other schools' experience when the new national curriculum is rolled out next year. Learning. Teachers so prepared to support the government, though, are few and, and far between. And with a series of well strikes planned over pay, pensions yes, and workload, the list of those opposing um, the Education uh, Secretary Michael, looks set to lengthen. I'm joined now by Deborah Kidd, the senior teacher who organised that petition, and by the Conservative MP Nick Gibb, who, who until last year was the school's minister. Deborah Kidd, when you think about the fact that nearly a quarter of children leave school in this country, uh, functionally innumerate, a bit of rote learning wouldn't go amiss, would it? I think that um, rote learning doesn't make them more numerate. I think the application of the knowledge, the, the ability to apply it, is what makes them numerate. So if a child needs to use mathematics in order to solve a problem or to, um, I don't know, figure out how much carpet somebody would need in their house, then you're placing that knowledge in context and it will stick with them. What I object to is the fact that they are expected to just take in this knowledge, regurgitate it for a test, and then it's never needed again. So it's no, no wonder that they leave enumerate or illiterate, which, in fact, I don't, I don't think is the case. Nick Gibb, regurgitating mm. facts and figures doesn't, isn't really going to do the trick. Well, children need knowledge, and knowledge builds upon knowledge, and we need to make sure that children leave school after 11 years uh, conversant with our history of our country, the important elements of history of the world, that they know about our, the scientific uh, world, DNA and the difference between a virus and a bacteria. And what this curriculum does, it ensures that children have that knowledge by the time they leave school. It's not about how things are taught, that's for teachers to teach, the pedagogy is up to teachers. We're trying to, the government's trying to reprofessionalize uh, the profession so that the, the previous curriculum had very detailed programs of study, lesson plans, uh, you know, specifications of how things should be taught. This curriculum is slimmed down, it's about 50% of the school timetable, but it does ensure that children leave primary school as fluent readers, that they can uh, learn, learn their tables by the time they're nine years old, that they can do long multiplication, long division, that they can do fractions, and that okay. when they go on to secondary school, they are equipped to cope with a demanding a science curriculum and a demanding okay. uh, history and geography so curriculum. Why do you think it's all got so vitriolic, this? I mean, Michael Gove has called you and other experts who signed the petition the blob. Yeah, <laughs> I joined Weight Watchers. Um, <laughs> He, I'm sure he wasn't referring to you personally. I think Michael Gove is claiming, and it's a political move, he's claiming language for the Conservative Party. So he's accusing teachers of not being interested in knowledge. You will not find a single teacher in this country who doesn't want children to acquire the kind of knowledge that Nick's just described. We're absolutely united in that sense. But what we would argue is that 
focusing purely on knowledge is going to undermine their capacity to move forward. So if you look at the PISA test, for example, the OECD are quite That's clear. The league tables. The league of, tables, of the international countries. league tables. This is trotted out by Michael Gove again and again to suggest that we are falling behind in standards. But if you look at the test, it doesn't test knowledge, it tests the application of novel knowledge in novel and innovative situations. And that's what our children are unable to do on an international level. And secondly, that test also, and we haven't fallen behind in the figures. If you actually listen to the head of the OECD, he'd say that that figure suggests the fact that more countries have come in. So because we're in a bigger field, we look like we've fallen, yes, but, but actually we've risen. The universities are complaining, though, that uh, young undergraduates mm. are starting university without the requisite knowledge they need to take a language further, uh, to study science. Uh, in Cardiff, uh, they did a survey in 2009 of undergraduates, and 88% of their undergraduates in the arts subjects, economics, history, could not name a single 19th century prime minister, not Disraeli, not Glaston, not Peel. Why do you think the debates got so bad tempered, though? I mean, we saw in a clip just then that, you know, Michael Gove was challenged by an opponent and, and he sort of dismissed her with, you know, yada yada. Why? Well, that's a cut and thrust of BBC Question Time. That's, you know, he's different. Michael Gove is He determined. won't listen to criticism, though, well, he? Will does he? listen to criticism. And but why do you he... think all but one of the panellists on the, who, who he assembled to help draw up the national curriculum have left? Well, if we've moved on, it's, that, that was, uh, th there were three experts uh, that was in, were employed by the department, and they have different views. Uh, but Tim Oates, who headed up that panel of experts, was very behind uh, the type of curriculum that's being drawn up. It's a knowledge-rich curriculum. We have to ensure that we close the attainment gap between those from wealthier and poorer backgrounds. And that's what this curriculum seeks to do. Children need to leave school having that knowledge that... Uh, Children who are educated from, you know, in more wealthy parts of the country get. We need to make sure all people, from whatever their background, have the same level of knowledge. I'm really glad that you're committed to the, the furthering of disadvantaged children. And I do think that Michael Gove's really passionate and genuine when he says he wants to do that. But the research from universities, and I did used to work in a university, and I would not support your view there. Um, the, the research from universities shows that the single biggest factor affecting children's progress in education is their vocabulary and the difference, the gap in vocabulary mm. when they're four. So you then implement a test that gives them nonsense words to read That's when to ensure they, they learn how to read. This is make, about making sure how? that they are fluent readers, decoding words by the time they're six, so they can then spend the next years of primary school building up their vocabulary There's because they've learned the art of reading. There What's happening now is they're still struggling read. after. There is more to reading than word of recognition. Of course, get that sorted in those, those early years. Those children need to develop their vocabulary. They, they've got and a reading. poverty. They've got a poverty of vocabulary and a poverty of experience. And shoving facts down their throats will not help them. Taking them to museums, taking them on trips, that expanding their well. vocabulary will happen. help them. Just one final question: Isn't this all a, this whole argument a smokescreen for your disgruntlement about pay, mm. pensions, and workload? No, I couldn't give a monkey's about my pay, to be honest. And we get good holidays, and I'm happy with my job. The thing that I feel really unhappy about is the constant belittlement and the idea that every time a new minister comes in, never mind a new government, they change policy to make their political mark and to gain political capital at the expense of the children in this country. Deborah Kidd, Nick Gibb, thank you very much for joining me. John. After the break, the death of one of Britain's greatest conductors. We look at the influence of Sir Colin Davis. and his legacy for the orchestral world.